Yeah, we're gonna have to glove up. We're gonna have to glove up for this one. Mmm. Look at this beauty. My favorite bit is it actually looks like it fell out of a car and, and dragged along the road. <laughs> yeah, and it's one of these weird HP pods. I, I, I don't know why they did it, and they're, they're so common. Story goes, apparently back in the day, if you had a problem with your iPod, yeah, you had to go to HP. You had to take it to them. What are they gonna do with it? It does nothing when you press a button, nothing at all, and it's unlocked. I got this iPod for five bucks, and I want to repair this as dirty cheap as possible, as cheap as I can. Uh, yeah, and we'll see if we can clean it up a bit as well. I got a few tricks. But first thing to do whenever you get an iPod like this is just plug it into the wall. Yeah, most of them do this anyways. <gasps> no way! Ah, <laughs> oh, hang on. Whoops, this isn't wall power. I think I plugged it into the computer. Sage Ross's iPod. Whoa, it works! Whoa, it's full of music. What do we got? Laka Daka. Beastie Boys. Black Sabbath. Cake? <laughs> Girl Talk. Man, this has got some cool stuff on it. Huh. Let's see if it actually pushes sound out of it. Yeah. Look, the, the, even the clicker works. <laughs> We're gonna get copyrighted. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, so yeah, the best way to get an old iPod working is just to find one that works. That's the moral of the story, kids. I honestly thought the hard drive would be cacking this, because look, look at the dents in the back here. I, I thought that's that's why it was so cheap, is because it was completely knackered and, you know, we're gonna put some other bits in it. But this iPod genuinely works fine, like, I, I get so many of these and nearly all of them have dead drives, so that's, that's really cool. What I was gonna do is to show you how dirty cheap you can flash mod it and screw it, we're gonna do it anyway! So flash modding these is super neat, you save battery, it, they're, they're lighter and you can really throw them around. My daily is one of these and I just, I, I treat it with no respect and it's so much fun and it never has any issues. So. If you want the sure thing, if you want to do this properly, uh, go to iFlash, not sponsored by the way, but you use their adapters and their bips and bobs, it will work. It will work perfect. This is the best way to do it. Uh, we're gonna do it the dirty scrub way. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna use these cheap adapters. And because honestly, I've gotten these to work before just fine, but there is a gamble to it. Dingus, come on. Thank you. Ugh. Uh. Uh. You can keep your uh, iPod mini drives in the leftover cases. You know, if that's something you want to do. So when it comes to dirty cheap adapters, you want to get the ones that look like these. It doesn't matter who you buy them from. It'll, if it looks like these, you've got the best chance of it working. I've tried this one. It didn't work. It stinks. So, it's also a beautiful time to flash mod iPods because flash storage ain't worth nothing anymore. I remember when you paid good money for 64 gigs micro SDs, you can get them for real cheap now. And that's, you know, that's the safe maximum for these ones. I've got 128 gigs working on one of these and it freaks out sometimes. But you can do it, but 64 gigs is really nice. You put it in like that, you put it in like that, you put it in like, ah. Uh that but there is one more trick with these ones you just want to bend that down a little bit otherwise we'll push on the back of the screen and break it don't ask me how i know let's get this dirty minx open are we still recording oh thank jim so you want to find the weakest corner especially one as rough as this found it oh yeah she's dirty she's a dirty one Yuck. Ta-da! Ah. Oh. That's really, that's really tidy. Except for that dent. Someone's been in here. Someone's been in here. That's the cheater's way. Lad, like the screw's undone! Look at that! Huh? Someone's been in here. I think someone swapped the battery in it. Even though that's a factory battery, I think someone has done something. 
Well, first thing to do, lazy people, the things in bad. This is good. This is a good one. Like, wow, a spare drive. Good. We're gonna stick this thing. Literally, you just put it in. Does the disc utility see it? Yes? No. That's not good. Oh, ha ha! <laughs> Yay! There you go. So, let's do a restore. Other times it will say it's, mostly it'll say it's corrupted and needs restoring. That's the same thing. Like, that's all sweet. And there we go. Beauty. There you go. Nice. But, we're actually going to take the drive out for now because we're going to make this less gross. First things first, Icy Pro. Cotton buds. Because there's a clear layer over the white, the dirt shows through on the front. Ah, uh, bent clip. Ah, uh, broken clip. I mean, look at it. <laughs> Can't believe it works. Oh, yeah, look at the mess on this one. Ugh. Pocket juice. Ah, uh, that's why I'm wearing gloves, by it, folks. Like, <laughs> these live in people's sweaty, gross pockets. God, look at these gouges. They're all full of schmutz. Oh man. Right. Time to bring out the big weapons. The 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 big one. The big lad. The brasso. Metal polish. But oh man, on plastics, it's just makes them shine. You should be doing this outside by the way. This stuff stinks. <laughs> Those scratches are so deep. You know, it is, it is what it is. Best I could do. I mean, it's literally been on the road. Normally one of these iPods, I'd replace the battery, but I'm very suspicious because someone swapped this out. Because that's the lazy way. Normally that cable goes underneath the board. So if you find it over top of the drive, you know someone lazy's been in there. So I want to test this because, hey, if it's, if it's good enough, I'll use it. I like to put something like this there. It's just something to keep it off the components. Now, before we put this in, uh, Actually, I didn't need to do that. But the iFlash adapters work really good. They're really nice adapters. So yes, you can use these cheap ones, but you gotta make sure that you really push them in there. <laughs> you make sure they're in there. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. I fought this for about half an hour off camera to get it going. When I put it back in there really good, it worked. Now, we're gonna add just bits of blue tack because trust me, the tiniest little back out, it's gone. It'll, it'll be like a dead pod. I viciously road test my flash modded fourth gen and that's the only thing that's let it down. It looks like overkill, but you know. So this is actually some acoustic foam from my, from my studio room and I like to just cut this little triangles worth. Stick it on top of the blue tack that you already got. No click? Ah. That was quiet. Boo. Ah, oh, there it went. So yeah, I mean, she's not, she's not beautiful, <laughs> but I want to give that battery a charge and let's do a battery rundown on it and let's see how long it actually lasts for. Cause look, it's still hanging in there. That's interesting. With the information gained from my last YouTube video, where I raced all of my iPods with the backlights on, seeing how quickly we can drain the batteries, it's about five, five and a half hours that the monochrome fourth gen iPods kind of throw in the towel. So being a used battery, oh man, I was guessing two, two, three hours tops. Well, hot dungus if the dang thing didn't last over eight hours and actually took the crown away from the first gen that won the race. Safe to say, this thing has a brand new battery in it. 
So that's just a big win for me. I even got brave and put 128 gigs in it to see if we could break these adapters and not. Working fine, shuffling fine, but a word of caution to anyone who wants to try this, you are gonna need a computer with an SD card adapter or a reader or something, because you'll be formatting it a whole bunch of times if this doesn't work first shot. This took hours to get going. The iFlash ones just work. They're awesome. They're, in my opinion, they're worth the money. They just work. But the dirty cheap way, it can work. But if you, at one point I actually swore that they were broken and I was about to throw them out. Adding up the costs all in in total, we're under 30 bucks to have a flash modded brand new battery iPod. I just got really lucky. Most of them don't even work this good. And the best bit is it didn't need anything. It worked fine. In my experience, the only adapters I've seen that fail is the compact flash to SD adapters. So my hot recommendation is to get the Dirty Scrub IDE board paired with the iFlash compact flash to SD adapter. That's a really good combo and I use it all the time and it saves heaps of money and in my opinion, works perfect. The video is over now.